As a child, I loved blowing bubbles. Anyone that knew me well knew that this would be where I would be. While all my friends were out there playing soccer or football or just making believe, I was inside blowing bubbles. Now, for the longest time, I know my parents were thinking to themselves, how are we going to break him of this habit? How can he stop popping the bubble? The answer was I never did because I caught myself blowing a comfort bubble even when the habit stopped. Now, for those of you who are wondering what a comfort bubble is, it's your routine. Your comfort bubble is what you do on a day-to-day -day life, what you see, who you talk to, and that's really what needs to be popped because popping the bubbles like I used to in my little crib never actually had that big of an effect on me. Now, for me, the easiest way for me to pop my bubble was to travel. Now, not for everyone did that work, but for me, I had to see a lot for me to understand that my eyes and what I saw was only a very slight part of what was out in the world. Now, as a child, I will admit to you, I was incredibly fortunate to see some of the most incredible things. For example, you can see how big of a traveler I was. I was so strong at that age, I was able to hold up the Leaning Tower of Pisa. Now, that being said, I looked at the Leaning Tower of Pisa and said, wow, that's really cool. Let's take this picture. Okay, now can we go get food? And for the longest time, that was how I viewed traveling. Just a way for me to go away, see cool things, take cool pictures. Actually, you can see Lilo and Stitch was at the bottom, so that made me feel pretty cool that I took a picture with him. But ultimately, I realized that that wasn't going to actually pop my bubble. What began to pop my bubble was when I started looking at things differently. And what caused me to do so was when I realized I was becoming that person. I was becoming that person that in Morocco would go into a restaurant and say, do you have fries? At that point, I started thinking to myself, I can't do this. So I started meshing my styles together. As you can see, I was in probably one of the most incredible places I've ever seen. And I looked at it first glance and said, that's cool. I whipped my phone out, took a few selfies with it, and then said, okay, cool, we're done. But then I took a second look at it. Here I am, at this point, 15 years old, looking at one of the largest mosques in the world. We're not talking in Morocco. We're not talking in Africa. In the world. And I was kind of looking at it like, it's a mosque. At that point, it clicked. I was living in my comfort bubble, no matter where I was. I was halfway across the world, and I was still living my life like I would in Cary. So that kind of got me to start thinking, something's got to change. Now, anyone that knows Cary Academy well knows that in our sophomore year, between sophomore and junior year, we go on an exchange trip. I was fortunate enough to take Spanish, so I went to Argentina. And anyone that knows me well knows that I'm kind of a security freak. So, of course, I looked up safety in Argentina. Now, one of the things on our itinerary was La Boca. I'm telling you, one of the most incredible places I've ever seen. But then I read this. Unfortunately, it's also where many tourists find themselves getting pickpocketed or robbed. This is the American that went to Morocco and asked for fries. Imagine how I felt reading that. Truth be told, that went through my head, I'm not going to Argentina. I will look at the pictures. I will live vicariously through Snapchat for my exchange trip. That was not an option. I was told by my parents, my teacher, my friends, my exchange student, that wasn't a valid excuse. So I went. This was what I saw. When I pulled up, the first thing in my head was, I'm not getting off of this bus. I will have to be dragged off of this bus before I get to where most Americans are robbed and pickpocketed. In reality, I picked myself up, I walked out, and I saw this. Now, what I was reading pretty much described that I was going to be walking into this super sketchy area where you had people hiding in those beautiful multicolored buildings trying to get my money. And I mean, there were. There were those beautiful painters in the left corner who were selling wonderful paintings of the area. 
This was when it dawned on me. The only way that I as a person could truly understand my place in the world and get out of my routine was to look at things like this and not worry about the logistics, not worry about how I didn't want to go to Argentina for safety. Or the biggest fear, honestly, that was going through my head was, this isn't my routine. This is not what I do every day, and I don't know how I'm going to go. Well, the answer was, I went, and when I tell you it was the best experience of my life, it really was. Anyone in here who hasn't actually gone yet and goes to Cary Academy, let me tell you, funnest experience of my life. You pretty much get put in this complete other world, and it teaches you that you're a small fish in a big pond. And that's when I realized what travel is actually about. Traveling is about seeing what's in front of you and getting outside of your comfort bubble, getting outside of your routine, and understanding that it's okay to be curious. It's okay to see and try new things. So that summer, I pretty much went out and decided that life needed to change. And I reevaluated what traveling actually is. Traveling is trying something new. Traveling isn't necessarily going to Italy or Argentina. Traveling could be driving to downtown Raleigh. I know that when I got back and I started thinking like, ooh, where's my next adventure? I can't wait to do it. I got my license and I just drove downtown for the first time. That gave me about as much as I got out of Argentina because my eyes were open. I was able to understand that what I'm seeing is new to me and that was getting me out of my comfort bubble. Similarly, that ties into going something new, but also going off the beaten path. Now, if we looked at the picture of me holding up the Leaning Tower of Pisa, we could pretty much see that that was a pretty popular spot. But going off the beaten path is going to La Boca, where most people would look at and freak out because it's unsafe. It's going on a new street in town. It's completely getting outside of what you do on a day-to-day -day life, and that is how you pop your bubble. What travel isn't is necessarily going far away, because I can tell you, first 10 years of my life, I went far away. The only thing I got out of it was pictures with Lilo and Stitch. Or it doesn't even necessarily mean spending a lot of money or anything, because those are great. The experience you get out of it are actually what counts. Now, I started thinking, what am I going to do? And this was what stood out to me. Travel makes one modest. You see what a tiny place you occupy in the world. First time I looked at that, I thought, well, no, I'm, I'm me. So like, of course, I'm not a small fish in a big pond. But then I started thinking, realistically, traveling helps us get out of what we do on a day-to-day -day basis. And part of the whole makeup of it is just seeing we as humans are all the same. And we as individuals need to pop that bubble. So next time you think about what sports you should do, I zero out of 10 suggest popping bubbles or blowing them. Instead, you need to try something new. In hindsight, I should have gone with soccer. Thank you.